I've been talking a lot of mumbo jumbo lately about how you can reach your goals in video games. Top 10%, top 5%, top 1%, whatever it is, you can hit them as long as you go through a certain process and, and you, you learn the correct way and you have the right mindset. I've been waiting for an example that I can use to actually do real time because I have a lot of past achievements, a lot of past achievements, but I wanted one that I could do in real time live and show you. I've just been waiting for that game to come out and it has come out. It's Teamfight Tactics. But... Is it even worth it? Is Teamfight Tactics really a competitive game? Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and Teamfight Tactics is one of the bigger games that have come out recently. It's one of the biggest games on Twitch, even bigger than League of Legends on Twitch. A lot of top card game players have been playing it, or just top players in general from other games, particularly Hearthstone players have been, play have been playing a lot of it, and it's been it's been taken to be a pretty competitive thing. There, there's a tournament today, I think it's there's a big tournament. Ranked just came out. And that's what I'm going to be doing, actually. I have a, a ranked, I, I want to hit top 1% on leaderboard at the very least in ranked. And I want to do it relatively quickly. So if you want to see how I do that, I stream it. Link down below. Chances are I'm streaming right now if you click on the link. But is it all worth it? Like, is this game actually competitive? If you're not familiar with Teamfight Tactics, it's another one of the auto battler genres. Uh, kind of like auto chess where you get a bunch of random heroes to choose from that you put on a board that automatically fight for you You can't control them with their AI and then you get some random items a random number of random items to put on your random heroes to fight the other person's random number of items on random you get what I mean um, So is it actually skill based? Is there too much randomness? What even makes a game competitive like What's the difference? What what makes a game an, an eSport or whatever? I think I have a unique perspective on this because not only do I have a lot of experience, again, reaching the top 1% of StarCraft, Heroes of New Earth, Dota, League, on and on, Overwatch. Um, I'm, I'm like a leaderboard grinder. So not only do I have experience with proven games that are competitive games, eSports games, right? But I also have a bunch of friends who are equally good, if not better than me. But what we did was we liked, it was a couple years ago, we had a hobby of taking games that were fun but really obscure and just pushing them to the limit. Like, we would find a game, we would we liked it, and we would play against each other, and we would just get way, way, way too serious. And sometimes they held up and they were really fun, and sometimes they broke, and they didn't uh, really hold up under the stress. A lot of times people just look at the games that are competitive, that are proven esports, but rarely do people talk about or even have experience with pushing bad games to the limits. So I can share some of those experiences with you and let's just talk about it. What makes a game competitive? What makes a game an eSport? You might think that the number one factor in making a game a competitive game is that it is skill-based. And while everything sort of funnels into this a little bit, this is actually not even on my list of things that make a game competitive, being skill-based. Because in reality, every game is skill-based, pretty much. Like, every game that has a reasonable amount of player interaction and player decision-making is skill-based. If it doesn't have enough decisions, then it can be literally solved, like tic-tac-toe, so there you, don't, you aren't skill-based anymore. Or if it's, there's no player decision whatsoever, like a slot machine, it's not skill-based. But, I mean... 100% orange juice, Mario Party, they're skill-based, like the better player will on average win those games, even extraordinarily random games, as long as they have enough player decision, are skill-based, because over a, a large enough sample set, you'll eventually get, a, you know, the better player will eventually win. There's no doubt that Teamfight Tactics is skill-based. There's decisions to be made every single round, and the better player over a large enough sample size will win. Okay, cool. But that actually has is irrelevant to a competitive game. That's just assumed for any game that is a multiplayer game that is somewhat skill based. So uh, what 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 are the elements? What are the what are the things? I have three. I have three elements that I think make a game competitive, make a game uh, esports viable. Number one, as the skill of the players who are participating increases, the game must maintain its spiritual integrity. What I mean by that is. As players continue to get better at the game, depending on the game, it can sometimes break. Uh, so the game is and a game is intended to be played a certain way. You know, for example, in Counter Strike, it's meant to be teams working together to attack an objective and defend an objective. In a game like Dota or League of Legends, it's designed for players to sort of 
work together but control the map and slowly increase their power level until they can all come together and have big team fights and eventually take objectives to eventually push the lanes in and win the game. Uh, so these games tend to keep that. No matter what skill level you are, that's sort of what happens. It would be really lame if at the top tier competitive of Dota, the best strat wound up being all five players just going mid. That's it, just like all five players go mid from each team, they fight it out, and one team just pushes to the end. It would really defeat the purpose of the entire rest of the game, and it would break the spiritual integrity of the game. In that case, it would not be competitively vi viable because as you increase in skill, the game breaks and becomes worse. Uh, tons of games have had this issue over time. I'll give you one example, though, of a game that my friends and I did this to. Cannon Brawl. The multiplayer is dead. I don't think anyone plays it anymore, but amazing game, Cannon Brawl. It's like a little mini RTS game where both you and another player construct cannons and collect minerals and stuff to kill each other eventually, eventually kill each other's base. It's like a really glorified cannon shooting game. Well, anyway, my friends and I, this is one of the games we grinded out. Like we went hard, we were cutthroat, we, we were very competitive uh, about this game for, you know, for a week or so. And I say a week or so because it didn't even last a week. The meta very quickly transitioned. First, we were, we were like, oh, this might be the strongest thing. Then it was pretty diverse. Each person had their different strategy. And then it was a different thing. And the meta slowly grew and grew and grew until <clears throat> at some point the meta settled on a unit called a bank. In Cannon Brawl, the objective of the game is to build various types of cannons. There's missile cannons, cannon cannons, ice cannons, uh, laser cannons, drill cannons. There's all sorts of different cannons you can cannon your opponent with. But there's also a building called a bank, and a bank simply makes you more gold, presum presumably so you can build more cannons eventually, right? It's like an economic thing. But also, a bank can bribe buildings. And uh, if you spend enough gold, you can actually steal a building on the other team. Once we got good enough at executing the bank strategy, we found that even the fastest cannon rush you could possibly do, like the fastest strat possible, still was not fast enough to beat banks before they could like get their whole setup going. So slowly, you know, there were some adjustments like there were some adjustments to try to beat the banks, and the banks made some adjustments to beat that, and some adjustments, and, and the meta shifted a little bit. But, you know, after a couple of days, once uh, we became good enough at running the bank strat, it just, that was it. The, the game devolved into you make banks, and I make banks. And yes, there there is, like, it is skill-based. Like, there's strategy. You need to place your banks a certain way and make them, like, the zone of control be such that you have limited liability but yeah it's basically it's basically an accounting game at that point like there were no cannons left in cannon brawl okay and even though like i said it was skill based the better player who executed better won like you could go back into the replay into the vod and say oh well you know here's why you lost because you made that execution error it, w it was nothing there was no more spirit to the game anymore like it was literally just nothing it was it was nothing like the game was supposed to be. The game had lost its spirit, so the game just didn't stand up to the highest level of play. It wasn't designed to be played at such a high level, or like metagamed at such a high level. Therefore, not viable. On the other hand, when I played a game called Magicka, very seriously, competitively PvP for about, again, like a week, it actually enhanced the experience. So in normal Magicka, you just sort of spam one ability, you can spam one ability to get through the entire game, but in PvP, you know, as your opponent is conjuring orbs, you need to see what orbs they're conjuring, you need to counter it with your own orbs because the different elements counter each other, which you never use in the regular game, like sometimes you do. Um, and then you use your, you use everything from shields to beams to rocks and everything counters everything. I don't know how this game was such a good, like, PvP competitive Twitch uh, fast reaction game. It was never balanced or anything, but uh, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, community is dead. No one plays it. No one really, like there's five people at the time. But that's an example of a game that did hold up to the highest levels of competition. It's just that no one played it, so it died. All right. The second thing I look at is for the ability for the game to converge on the best player in a reasonable amount of time. What I mean by that is, let's take StarCraft for example. It's pretty easy to determine who the best player is. You just play like three games against each other, just one v one, and boom, there you go. At the most, you play five games against each other. 
one v one, and there you go. You pretty you can decide at that point who the better player at the time is, right? Because I mean, if you lose the best of five, there's no excuses in StarCraft. You 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 justifiably lost. You justifiably lost, and it was no one else's fault except for your own. If you play, let's say, five hands of poker, that's not even close. That's not even scratching the surface of actually being able to have a reasonable contest, right? You need far, far more hands of poker, but poker hands also go very, very quickly. And that being said, I want to call out like a myth, or not, not a myth, but like a, a fallacy that I see people talk about a lot when they talk about competitive games. A lot of people relate a lot of things to poker. And they say, oh, well, it's like poker, you know, you play enough games and it, and it evens out. The thing about poker, though, is you can play hands very quickly. On average, live, like at an actual poker table in a poker tournament, you know, you get around probably 30 hands per hour. About, about one hand every two minutes or so. 30 hands per hour. Now let's consider a game like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic, which are also very random heavy. You only get, like maybe three games in an hour on average. So that's only 10% of poker, right? So presumably, if you are only 10% as fast as poker is, you need to be 10 times more skill-based, 10 times less random to be equivalent to poker. So also remember that when you're talking about poker equivalencies. So in the case of Teamfight Tactics, how many games do you need, right? Especially because it's a free-for-all of eight players, how many games do you actually need to play to figure out Who's the best? Is it three? Like if you play three games, is that enough? Maybe you're just going to get bad luck for three games and you get fourth or third place all three games or someone else gets good luck and they get first and second place. Because like I said, obviously in a ranked ladder environment, if you play 300, 400, 500 games, the players are going to sort out into uh, the correct order by skill. But like I said, you need to be able to actually have contests. It's a competitive game. It's an eSport game, presumably. So you need to have a way to have a contest in a reasonable amount of time to actually determine something. And finally, number three. And this sort of goes hand in hand with number two, but your game needs to be able to have a reasonable tournament format. In 1v1 games, again, this is very easy. Just run best of threes, run best of five, single limb, double limb, whatever. Fantastic tournament format, super good. Uh, for team games, it's the same, except you're in teams instead of 1v1. It's like one team versus one team. But then this is something that plagues bra Battle Royales, for example. Uh, like in my time running PUBG tournaments, I hated the format. I actually hate all Battle Royale formats up to this date of po uh, this video being published. Any live LAN Battle Royale tournament, I've hated the format. Because you tend to get, uh, it's, it's a Battle Royale, so there's all these players and they rank you by placement and kills depending on the format, but they, they, they give you points per game basically. And a lot of these tournaments have like 10 game matches, 12 game matches, like at the very least you have like eight game matches. So you wind up having it such that if you do really poorly for the first six or seven matches, you're basically out. Like you literally can't place anymore. You don't have enough games to make up the points that you need to get into a top three placement or whatever it is the top cut is. But you still need to play. Uh, on the last round or the last two or three rounds, half the teams are irrelevant. Like literally they're playing even though they're playing for nothing, which is really just bad uh, all, all around. You should never have teams that are forced to play even though they can lose. But on the upper side, you have teams that can't lose anymore. You have teams that, uh, you know, you still have two games left, but you have a team in first place that literally can just get last twice and they still win. So you have a tournament winner before the tournament is even over. Again, it's pointless. Everyone's just watching for no reason. They're like, okay, well, we already know who wins. Why are we watching this? Uh, but you can't, you can't, like, you still need to play them out for second and third place, right? This is a horrible tournament format. And uh, partly the tournament, like the community is just not very receptive to change. But also it's just really hard to make a format for 16 different teams all playing together because you need 16 teams to play a game, you can't knock any of them out, so how are you gonna keep all of them relevant throughout the entire thing, right? Uh, it needs to be, it needs to have a rising action. And and I think that we'll see Teamfight Tactics have a, a similar difficulty with this free-for-all, but we'll get into how Teamfight Tactics fits into all these examples in just a bit. But the important thing 
is you need to have a tournament format that makes sense. It needs to be uh, ideally entertaining, but that's almost that comes secondary to just making sense. Because if you can't reasonably run an event or a tournament to, deser to, de to determine who's good at the game, then again, it can't be a competitive game. So these are the three things that I'm looking at. So how does Teamfight Tactics stack up to these standards? Well, number one, does the game maintain its spiritual integrity as you get better? Absolutely. So in fact, it, it actually is the best case where it gets even better as you get better at the game, because in lower levels, you can just spam one strategy over and over and over again and do pretty well. Like you just spam assassins, just spam assassins every game, you'll be fine. Spam like six sorcerer every game, you'll be fine or whatever. But as your opponents get better and you need to go up against stronger compositions and they learn to branch out into different strategies, you need to also do the same because yes, you could force assassins every time, but you won't always have the best assassin team every time. Sometimes you'll just be thrown very few assassins. So yes, you could still force it, but it just won't be very good or very optimal. So you'll be punished by good players. The better you get at the game, the more it forces you to use all of the champion pool and all of the mechanics and build all of the items. You can't just ignore your Negatron cloaks. You like have to use them as much as possible. That's really TFT's strongest suit by far. These next two are a little bit shaky. I'm not quite as confident about them and we'll see. So of course, uh, the second point was you need to be able to determine a, a contest of skill in a reasonable amount of time. Generally over three games, if you're the best player in the lobby, you might win one and then you'll get top four in two other games, hopefully top three. That's not super convincing necessarily because that means another player probably got first place and then also top four two games. So you get equivalent uh, results. So we're looking at like to, to resolve a lobby of eight, we're looking at like, um, you know, at least five games, maybe even maybe even more potentially. I'm, I'm hoping that five games is good. And remember, these games are long. These games are 30 minutes or more. You don't have a lot of turnover here. This is this is a main this is a big downside. That being said, hitting top four is very consistent. Like the top four of a lobby or the, the top three of a lobby will consistently hit top four every time. So that's very good, but like I said, hitting top one or top two can often down, oftentimes come down to luck. So I'm not sure exactly how many games you'll need to uh, actually push out of that. And now we're on to by far the weakest, uh, potentially the weakest uh, quality of the game, and that is the tournament format. So it's free for all, which is the same as a battle royale sort of in spirit. You have eight players playing, up to eight players. Again, we could theoretically play less if we wanted to, but there's eight players which means, again, you get into this point system thing where, because you can't just have like the person who gets first wins because obviously if you get first one time, that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. So you need to go by, by a point system where, oh, first place is worth like 20 points and second place is worth 15 points. And then you run into the same issue where, well, you might have players who are still playing who can't actually place anymore or players who are still playing who have already won the tournament. Uh, the exact same issue as Battle Royale. I think that there are solutions to this, but they're just, uh, they just haven't really been explored very much. People are trying to be very safe. Tournament organizers try to be very safe in general. Uh, so I think that this is really on the community to try to put an impetus on. If you have a good idea for a tournament format for either Battle Royale, <clears throat> uh, but specifically for Teamfight Tactics, to make it so the tournament rises in stakes as you progress, you don't have that issue of having the point system where you know people are just playing even though they can't win anymore if you have a good idea leave it down in the comments because i've been i've been think i've been like thinking about it on and often it's really hard to come up with a good solution so what's the verdict is team fight tactics competitively viable i think that what it really has going for it is that it's one of the best games in a while i've seen that gets better as you get better the spirit of the game really, uh, really is maintained very well as you get to higher levels. It makes me want to improve at the game because as I improve at the game, the game gets more fun. That's how you get really these viral games that people play and grind and play all day because obviously, um, you know, if you're getting rewarded for getting better, not just, because, not just by a number on the screen, not just by a, a glitter on your icon, but you actually, the game is getting more fun you're encouraged to get better, encouraged to uh, play ranked, and that's how games like Dota and League of Legends <clears throat> and Counter-Strike got so popular. All of those games 
depending on the meta for Dota and League, right? Maybe sometimes not, but generally for most of their histories, all of those games get better as you get better. Like Counter-Strike becomes insane as you become really good. Like you get all these intricate, crazy plays. Dota and League of Legends have all these uh, new strategies and mechanics and teamwork that you can never pull off in lower levels that you can at higher levels, and it becomes really, really fun. Uh, and I really see the same thing in Teamfight Tactics. And I think that that's the most important thing that gives me a lot of hope uh, for the game. The tournament format, I think, is the biggest weakness. I think that it must be possible to create a format for free-for-all that does not suck. It must be possible. Um, turn, either the community needs to really make an active effort to come up with something, because let me tell you, guys, pro tournament organizers are never going to come up with anything that is like fresh and new and risky because they just have too much at stake. So it has to be done on a community level first, unfortunately. That's one of the big things that have been holding Battle Royales back is that Battle Royale tournaments are generally rather hard to organize. So they're generally only organized by professionals or by semi-professional like community organizations who are not willing to take risks. As for being able to resolve a contest in a reasonable amount of time, if we relate it to Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic, if you consider that two people take presumably 40 minutes, and then if you count tournament and administration, we'll say an hour, right? Two people take about uh, 40 to 50 minutes to resolve a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic. <clears throat> if we consider that eight people, if we multiply that, so if we multiply that four by four to get the eight people from Team to Fight Tactics, that's like, uh, what, three and a half hours? Can you resolve a team fight tactics eight-man free-for-all in three and a half hours? I'm pretty rel I'm pretty sure you can. Like I said, this comes back down to figuring out a good format to resolve these things in that isn't lame. Uh, but I think that if I were to play with eight people for three and a half hours, that's what, seven matches? I think I, that's a best of seven, basically. That's I think that's more than enough to actually come up with a good winner. So I think it's at least comparable to Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic, which I think are on the very lowest possible spectrum of competitive games uh, that are random and take a while to figure to resolve a winner. At the very least, as a, as a ladder game, because uh, being on a ranked ladder takes out the issue of needing a tournament format. It takes out the issue of needing to resolve conflicts in a, a short amount of time because you're playing like two, three, four hundred games, like you're grinding the ladder, you know? So I, and it only strips it down to just that first thing, which I said the game is very strong at. So at the very least, I think grinding like the rank ladder is going to be very rewarding, very fun. Uh, I think it's a great ladder game. So hopefully they can resolve the tournament issues that I outlined. But overall, I'm pretty excited to play. And like I said, uh, my goal is to get top 1%. I think that that's probably going to be like diamond or masters or something. I don't know. Obviously my top, top goal is to hit challenger. Um, we'll see how much time I have or whatever to accomplish that. Um, but yeah, top 1% I think is easily doable. If you want to see how I hit top 1% in a game, go ahead and check out my stream. I'm going to be streaming Teamfight Tactics uh, for a long time, like five days a week or something. And uh, I'm also going to keep the videos coming. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Discord. It's down below. My Discord, uh, our Discord community is really, really awesome. Follow me uh, everywhere else you see me, not in real life. Don't follow me in real life. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. I will see you on the floopity flop. I will see you on the turntable. The, 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 like, we're going to turn around and you're going to be on the, on the other side.